Hello friends. Today in this session, we will discuss design of roller compacted concrete mix for pavements. And it is given in IRC special publication 68. The roller compacted concrete pavements are used in the construction of low volume roads. And the requirement is that the traffic should not be more than 450 commercial vehicles per day. This type of pavement can also be used for forest roads, parking area or shoulders of pavement where heavy traffic is not expected. For roads where speed is not an essential attribute or where high speed is not expected, for example in low volume roads, then roller compacted concrete pavement without a bitumen surfacing can be a good choice. But the final finished surface of RCC pavement is not as smooth as the conventional paver laid concrete pavement and therefore the maximum permissible value of roughness of roller compacted concrete pavement is permitted up to 3200 millimeter per kilometer. The design of RCC that is roller compacted concrete is based on the compressive strength and fragile strength and minimum characteristic compressive strength should normally be 30 MPa and minimum flexible strength should be 3.8 MPa at 28 days. The subgrade CBR should not be less than 5% and thickness of subgrade will be minimum 300 mm as we generally take for low volume roads. The design of mix for roll compacted concrete materials are same as we take in a conventional concrete that is cement mineral admixtures like fly ash or ground granulated blast furnace slab, aggregates, coarse aggregate and fine aggregate and water. Now here the cement can be of any of the following category. It can be either ordinary Portland cement as per IS 269. It can be of 43 grade or 53 grade. It can be Portland Pozzolana cement as per IS 1489 part 1 or it can be Portland slag cement that is PSC as per IS 455. Cement in which a portion of Portland cement clinker is replaced by industrial byproduct like fly ash then it is called composite cement and if composite cement is used then its compressive strength should not be less than 43 MPa at 28 days. If the soil around has soluble salts like sulphate in excess of 0.5%, then the cement shall be sulphate resistant and it will be tested as per IS12330. The mineral admixture can be either fly ash or it can be GGBFS that is ground granulated blast furnace slag. And when fly ash is used, then it should be tested as per IS 3812. And these are the requirements as given in IRC that the fineness as measured by Blaine's permeability method should be minimum of 320, particle retained on 45 micron, 34%, lime reactivity, that is average compressive strength, should be 4.5 Newton per millimeter square, soundness test dry shrinkage percent should not exceed 0.15 and the percentage of fly ash by weight of cementitious material should not be more than 25 percent that is the upper limit provided in the code. If we are using ground granulated blast furnace slag GGBFS then it should be factory manufactured slag and it can be used up to 40 percent by weight of cementitious material. The, the ordinary polder cement can be of 43 or 53 grade, but the quantity of this GGBFS should not be more than 40%. This material should conform to IS16714. Aggregate for design of mix for roller compacted concrete should be in two parts that is coarse aggregate and fine aggregate as generally is the case with normal aggregate, normal concrete also. Natural aggregate conforming to IS383 and which are clean, hard, strong, dense and non-porous can be used as coarse aggregate. It can be made from crushed stone or it can be gravels also. 
aggregate should not be alkali reactive. The maximum size of aggregate is 26.5 millimeter. Its loss angeles abrasion value should be less than 35 percent. Combined elongation flexion index should be less than 40 and water absorption should be less than 3 percent. Impact value should be less than 30 percent. Aggregate should not be alkali reactive and if water absorption is more than 3 percent then soundness test should invariably be conducted for aggregate and it should be used only if it passes the durability test as measured by soundness test. And the aggregate which have water absorption more than 5 percent should not be used. The fine aggregate shall be clean natural sand or crushed stone sand or maybe the combination of these two and they should conform to IS 383. The deleterious materials in sand should not be more than these values that is clay lump should not be more than 1% and coal and ignite material should not be more than 1%. The, the material passing 75 micron sieve should not be more than 3% in natural sand and 8% in case of crushed sand. The grading of aggregate which is specified in the code for after combining coarse aggregate and fine aggregate should conform to this table starting with 26.5 and ending at 75 micron and this is the grading which should be achieved in field. Water for mixed design should be clean potable water as per IS456. The pH value of the water for mixing and curing up to 9 is permitted. The design of roller compacted concrete is based on the fragile strength of the concrete and the moisture content shall be selected so that the mix is dry enough to support the weight of a vibratory roller and yet it should be wet enough to permit adequate distribution of paste throughout the mass during mixing, laying and compaction. So it is a zero slump concrete. Slump is not a criteria here to design the mix. The water content or the moisture content is corresponding to optimum moisture content and maximum tide density test. Actual field moisture content can be 1 to 2 percent higher than optimum moisture content just to compensate the evaporation which takes place during laying and compaction. So the first step in the design is that we should test the aggregate and water. So physical properties of cement, physical properties of aggregate and water should be checked. And if they are found suitable, then we go for the step two. The step two is proportioning of aggregates to get the desired grading. Generally at site, three types of sizes are available, 20 millimeter, 10 millimeter and fine aggregate. And you can proportion the, these aggregates by any method to get the grading as given in the IRC code. In another video, I have discussed three methods, trial and error method, analytical method, graphical method, or you can say Rothfuss method. You can use any of these three methods or you can devise your own method, but the target should be that the aggregate grading should be around midpoint of this range. So for each size, you take the midpoint of this range and target of proportioning of aggregate should be to achieve this grading which will give you the maximum density. The third step is concrete mix proportioning and proportioning of ingredients will be done to achieve the target mean strength and there are two strength one is cubic strength another is flexible strength. So the first trial may be started with 14 to 18 percent cementitious material by weight of dry materials. The minimum cementitious materials should not be less than 350 kg per meter cube. Now when I say here cementitious material, it basically means cement plus admixtures. Admixture can be either fly ash or it can be either blast furnace slag. The fly ash or blast furnace slag content shall be limited to 25% or 40% by weight of cementitious material respectively. So if you are using fly ash, it should not be more than 25%. If it is GBFS, it should not be more than 40%. The fourth step is determination of OMC and maximum dry density. Here the trial mix of concrete shall be prepared 
with water content of 5 to 8 percent in steps of 0.5 percent of total weight of material. And optimum moisture density relationship shall be established by preparing cubes with varying moisture contents and by drawing moisture density curve. A specimen will be compacted by a special vibratory hammer. And the field OMC may be increased 1 to 2 percent to compensate evaporation loss during transport. So this is the type of compaction curve you get. Dry density is plotted on y-axis and moisture content is plotted on x-axis. And then corresponding to this maximum density, you can find out what is the optimum moisture content. And let us say in this example, you get OMC as 6.5% and dry density as 2.375 gram per centimeter cube or 2375 kg per meter cube. Now it is used to determine the total moisture content in the mix, this OMC. So after you find out OMC and dry density, the next step is to calculate the requirement of material for 1 meter cube of concrete after you get OMC and maximum dry density. So let us say the OMC is 6.5% and MDD is 2.374 gram per centimeter cube or 2374 kg per meter cube. And let us assume that the cementitious material is 16%. And the coarse aggregate, fine aggregate, they are in the ratio of 55, 55% and 45%. And fly ash will be 25% of the cementitious material. So we make some calculations here. Total dry material for 1 meter cube concrete will be 2374 kg. Out of this, 16% is your cementitious material so that will become 380 kg. And out of this 380 kg, fly ash is 25%. So you take 25% of 380 kg and that is 95 kg. So remaining will be your aggregates. So cement is now 285 kg and aggregate will be 84% of this 2374 that is 1995. So coarse aggregate will be 55% of this 1995 kg that is 1097.25 kg and fine aggregate will be 897.75 kg. So these are the weight of different ingredients. Water will be 6.5% of this 2374 kg and that will be 154.375 kg. So once you calculate the amount of different types of materials for one cubic meter of concrete, the next step is to cast the cubes and beams. Cubes and beam specimen are prepared for testing compressive and flexible strength to comply with the mix requirement. And these specimen will be compacted using footed vibratory hammer. And as I told you in the beginning, they are tested at 28 days and the minimum characteristic compressive strength should be 30 MPa and minimum pressure strength should be 3.8 MPa after 28 days of curing. If the strength criteria is not met, then cement content is increased and all the steps starting from compaction curve are repeated till the strength criteria of cube strength and pressure strength are met. Thickness of this roller compacted concrete pavement is to be designed as per IRC SP62. So finally, you prepare a report and the design report will have the physical properties of aggregates, type of cement to be used and type of admixture to be used, proportioning of aggregates, results of OMC and MDT in the form of a proctor test and quantity of ingredients for one meter cube of concrete and 28 days cube strength and 28 days wave flexure strength. So friends, thank you very much. I hope you have understood the design of mix for roller compacted concrete. You can write your comments in the comment box.